in my next video on a little bit of research that I did um, after we found out what type of twins we're having, which are monoamniotic, monochorionic twins. Um, I searched YouTube and I found really just very little concerning this type of twin and um, I was quite disappointed. So that's why I decided to, to start doing one of my own. I've been waiting for quite a while to do this. We had to wait for a charger and you know figure out all this other stuff to do it. But um, anyways, I just wanted to share our experience in having this type of twin um, just to help other people that are that are in the same situation at first when you when you learn what type of twin you're having it's really quite scary and and and, and I think it helps knowing um, other people's experiences and and just knowing how things worked out for them um, so, I found a little bit of research I said I wanted to share. First, I'll tell you most of what I found, I found on www.monoamniotic.org. Um, this website, website has um, some statistics on there. A lot of people that um, had this type of twin or lost this type of twin are on this website so they offer a lot of insight good insight experience in in, in this type of situation so I'm just going to get right on to it um, number one monoamniotic twins are always identical Number two, monoamniotic twins are the result of a late splitting egg, one that split around 8 to 12 days after fertilization. Number three, monoamniotic twins occur only in 1% of twins. Number four, monoamniotic twins share a placenta, an amniotic sac, and an amniotic sac, which means they have skin-to-skin -skin contact. Number five, monoamniotic twins are considered extremely high risk because of the risk of cord compression leading to fetal death as a result of umbilical cord entanglement. Number six, monoamniotic twins are always delivered by C-section. Number seven, monoamniotic twins are usually delivered between 32 to 34 weeks gestation because of the risks of staying in utero are greater than the risks associated with the premature birth. Number eight, 75% of amniotic twins are girls. Number nine, inpatient monitoring at viability yields the greatest success rates. Um, kind of, you know, what I read, especially on that website, um, that apparently they put most mothers in inpatient care um, in the hospital at about 24 weeks um, and they monitor you um, you know all day long basically it's like an hour um, three days or three times a day um, to every other hour to 24 hour monitoring just depending you know how your situation is whenever they monitor you um, I started out seeing my doctor um, for the first couple of months I saw him once a month um, because at that point if anything goes wrong with the baby you know, they can't do anything to save the baby um, but now um, I'm 18 weeks we start seeing the doctor every two weeks from here on out and um, we'll start first we'll start monitoring the babies from like my doctor's office so I'm going to go in there and um, be monitored in there and then probably at some point I will be put in the hospital to monitor um, the babies and just give the babies a good start um, I'm going to go ahead and end this video and I will be doing another one um, for my second doctor's appointment and basically from here on out I've had seven 
doctor appointments, right? Yes, I had seven doctor's appointments. So I'm just going to continue here in a row of catching up to my seventh doctor appointment and um, just sharing my experience. I hope to see you again. I guess I'll see you, you know what I mean, in my next video. Thanks for watching.